let's take a look at the Volante customer database. The customer database is used for meal plan or on account charges that can be tied into residents, employees, or other customer types. For these videos, we will refer to our customer entries as customer. The customer types set up in the customer database will usually take one of three types. The first type is a meal credit account. These are a number of meals granted to a customer for use during a certain time period. This could be three meals per day, or 30 meals per month, or 14 meals in a week. These are automatically reset by the system after a time period has passed. Another type of account we may have set up in the customer database is a declining balance account. This is an account that has a spending dollar amount limit, which is loaded into the account at certain intervals. This is an account balance that works from a positive amount down to zero. And once zero dollar has been reached, no more spending on this account can take place until a reset has been completed. The last type of account we have is a charge account or an inclining balance. This is an account that works from zero dollars down into a negative up to a maximum limit. Once this limit has been reached, no more spending can be performed on that account until the account is paid off or a reset takes place. Let's take a look now at our customer database and see how we can view existing customers, make changes to accounts, and add new customers. We'll go into the customer database section, which loads us into our customer info tab. Within this tab, we can hit find to view a list of all existing customers within our customer database. I can also search by first name, last name, card codes or room numbers, or any other piece of information that's important to search by for your location. This is all configurable within our system. I'll go ahead and search by first name for Amy. As we can see, I've loaded up one customer that meets the criteria of Amy in the first name. We can also search by partial results by typing in part of a last name, for example, and doing a find. In this case, I've found multiple accounts that have AI in the last name, for example, Ainsworth, Sailors, and Hainsworth. By clicking on a customer entry in the customer database, we can see additional information about this customer. I can see their first name, last name, room number, and card codes, as well as the kind of accounts that are set up for this customer. A customer may have anywhere from one to four accounts set up depending on their use and your location's needs. For example, we may have a primary account for food, a secondary account for alcohol, a third account for salon or other transport charges, and a last account, the fourth account, for all other charges that may be rung up. I can also see information about email addresses, birthdays, or anything to do with account notes or allergies for this particular customer. I'm also seeing information here about their account balances. We can see account balances for all four account types in this view. I can also go into my transaction info tab for this customer and change my date and time range by month and hit display to view all transactions that were run for this customer during this time period. By selecting on one of these entries, I can see transactions that were performed and items that were purchased by this customer in the customer database, as well as any charges that took place. In this case, we can see the food items were charged to a food account and alcohol items charged to an alcohol account. Let's go back to our primary info tab and I can make some changes to this customer account by hitting on the edit button at the bottom. In this case, maybe I need to adjust a room number or add some account notes in this case. These account notes may be internal to the customer database only. However, certain fields can be enabled to display on the point of sale for your cashier. I'll go ahead and hit save at this point to save the changes that we've made to this customer account. Now, let's go ahead and create a new customer entry in our customer database today. I'll go ahead and hit new at the bottom and I'm going to enter a first name and a last name. Now the room number, customer code, and card code likely come from another system or another tracking set that you may have. Also, this information may be input automatically as part of an import-export cycle if you're doing this. 
Please do keep in mind that any edits you make to existing accounts or any new entries you make in the customer database will also have to be reflected in any sort of import or export file that you are creating and having loaded into the system as part of an automatic process. If you do have this process, please consult with your IT team or other contact. I'm going to go ahead now and complete this entry for this new customer. And I'm gonna enter a card code and a customer code. If I do not enter these fields, they will automatically populate for me. For this new customer's primary account, I'm gonna go ahead and choose one of our meal count plans. In this case, three meals per day. For the next account, I'll choose a declining account, N through Z, as the last name of this customer falls within that naming convention. For the third account, I'll go ahead and choose an alcohol account, and for the last account, I'll choose extra charges for any other charges they may have. As we can see, when those accounts were added, account IDs were created for billing purposes. I can also go ahead and update birthdays, emails, allergies, or any other fields that may be useful to keep track of for this customer, and I can also load pictures if we're using pictures in our database. I'll go ahead and choose Upload, and look for the picture of the person that we wish to load and hit open. Once it's selected in our window, again, we'll open it and it loads into our new profile. The pictures are best to be square in shape and under 150 pixels in size. I'll go ahead and hit save to this account now. And now this customer has been saved into our customer database. As we can see, if I leave from the customer and return to the customer, all of the account balances are currently zero as no transactions have been run for this customer. In our next video, we will take a look at how we can manually load funds into a customer account in instances where a customer may have been added in the middle of a reset period. For example, our single declining N through Z account may be resetting on the 20th of the month. However, we've added this resident on the 27th. This means that the resident will have no primary account balance to work from until the reset period has come around again, which means we do have to prorate a balance into this person's account in order for them to use it the POS.